All right, well, Patrick, um, I guess I'm going to have to go ahead and uh, throw out those topics of discussion right now because we got some time that's going to pass here, and we're waiting for Christopher O'War, the head coach of the Bulldogs. In fact, look at it. He's right on cue. He is walking across the floor, and I'll keep that. Just a second. What? I was just going to use him right now. I'll bring him right back. Okay. I'm just going to go over here. All right. I'm sorry, Patrick and I were talking to each other, and he, he could have talked to me through the headset, but he didn't. Christopher O'War, Happy New Year to you, sir. Yes, sir. Happy New Year's in two days. Not yet. Don't rush the days, man. Okay, but <laughs> we could start celebrating as it. soon as this it. game's over. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. So, uh, first of all, uh, we had a nice little visit at halftime of the girls' game that proceed, uh, precedes your game. Yes, sir. And we talked to Clark Eisenhower and his history with Austin. Did you have any acquaintance with him or know anything about his, his history with Austin uh, before this game was scheduled? Um, a very little. I know he used to coach here uh, in the past. Uh, that's all I do, I do know. I was, I was more on the Katie side prior to me getting here, so I had very little knowledge of that. So, you know, when you think about uh, what you do during the holiday time, nobody wants to play their critical district game. So teams either schedule a game here and there or they commit themselves to some tournaments. Did you do any tournaments with your team or did you stick with just uh, scheduling games like the one we have today with a non-district district opponent, the Randall Lions? Well, we did our scheduling this year very differently this year. We did all our tournaments in, uh, in the beginning of the year. So we're actually done with tournament season. I uh, had a lot of great co competition, our preseason, finishing our preseason plus 500. And then, so when we get back from our break, we give them a nice long break this time. Uh, so after a break, we're playing a competitive uh, athletic ran uh, Randall team. So uh, we did it like that to, yeah, give us ready for district. And at the same time, test us out, see if we're, re we're ready to go into district, uh, the last end of a long district with a bang. And your, your history of coaching, you know, the teams that you've coached and the teams that you've coached against, what are some of the things that you've observed about these brand new schools? I know it's got to be very exciting for the players on the Randall squad as well as Coach Eisenhower. Uh, it seems like it's a great area to live, yep. really growing, a lot yep. of people moving in. Yep. And what are some of the things that uh, really jump out at you about what maybe do's and don'ts if you're the coach of a new program like that? Man, uh, do continue to build them up from scratch because you're building the foundation of that program. And he's doing a heck, uh, Eisenhower's doing a heck of a job starting that foundation with those freshmen, sophomores, and juniors, and just keeping them competitive. Uh, and, and then having that, not being too serious about the wins, but more serious about the culture of a championship culture. Because the wins come along when the culture is a championship culture. Uh, a lot of kids get hung up on the results. And if you do that too early, uh, you lose a lot of kids, you lose a culture. Uh, but just having that, uh, the, those details of building success will lead to success. And it's continuing to make it an attractive program, not just for uh, the kids, but for himself to enjoy it uh, so, so, so he can enjoy uh, the opportunity of building the foundation as well as the kids. I like to draw parallels as you use the word culture. Yes, sir. You know, it's so closely hand in hand with classroom management. Yes. If you happen to be a public school yes. teacher, yes. you got to get the, the kids off to on the right foot develop the procedures, yep. know what's expected yep. of them, what they should not yep. do. And and so I know that's that's very important with any kind of athletic program. So uh, I, I know that uh, it's very exciting for Coach Eisenhower to get a chance to develop that kind yep. of thing. Yes, sir. But now this is, uh, you know, we're – we're your broadcast home for Fort Bend County Sports, so let's talk about your team. I know we, we don't have too much time with you here, but first of all, who are the players that have really stood out for you and made a difference and helped you get the victories that you have, and who's going to have to come through today in order to get the victory over Randall? One thing I love about this team, and I said it in the spring, win, lose, or draw, it's fun just coaching this team. His teams love, love each other. Um, Ethan Toe, he's a three-year letterman. He's a senior this year. 
He's going to actually break a record for the most threes in a uh, in a season. Uh, he's got to be consistent. He has uh, he has moments where he has he is kill killer mentality, where he wants to go out there and get everything. He's a great defender, so he just needs to be consistent um, and confident on his shot. We got a junior, uh, Jonah Wabreno. Um, he was a, a JV MVP last year, but he's shooting about 40% from the three point line. And we you'll see today we shoot a lot. Uh, he's a very good shooter. We also have a, a young kid who nobody knows about him. Whoever gets him down the line is going to be a steal. 6'4", um, Cheyenne Patel, sophomore, uh, shooting sensation, dribbling sensation. He's going to be the future of this program uh, after, after these seniors leave. And, of course, Michael Baines, uh, a two-year returner, has a chance to be a defensive player of the year if we can get it all right in our district. Um, and just the, the collective bunch of our defense. Um, uh, but those guys are some of the key guys that make the train move, make the train run, and make the train go. By the way, um you mentioned Rabueno. Yep. I, I met Jonah's dad a yep. few minutes ago, yep. and and you were not around, but he told me who your starters were. <laughs> <laughs> so check the roster. You're Are wrong you on one. So four will start for zero. Four will start instead of zero. Yes, okay. But he did good. He did good. So I know that mostly he said that sometimes you do have that, that one uh, that yep. one switch out, yep. but, but he was pretty close. Yep, yep. You know. Four out of five is 80%. Yep. So if it's a five-question quiz and you got four of them right, I guess yes, you sir. pass yes, sir. with flying colors. Yes, sir. Anything else that you want to say before we let you go? Thanks True. for being with us on This is the Next Level Urgent Care Countdown to Tip-Off show. Truly appreciate you always being here, man. Bring your butt out when we play Travis at home. Uh, you, you, you're our good luck factor, so we need you out here, man. All right. Well, I'm, I'm glad you see it that way. You know, Travis's baseball coach thought I lost him a bunch of games last year. <laughs> All right. That is Chris Over, the best dressed coach in the in the district. I mean, he's he looks slick, very handsome with a gold chain and uh, the black turtleneck. You know, he ought to be sipping brandy while he's on the bench, except the UIL would not allow that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I'm going to uh, take a quick break. Uh, this We're in the middle of a doubleheader. Girls basketball, the Austin girls have taken care of business with a win of, uh, I think the final score was 76 to 13 over the South Houston Lady Trojans. And we're getting you ready for the Austin boys taking on the Randall Lions. It's a nice day here inside the gym. Maybe warmer than some people want it, but you know, I've been in a couple of gyms that were really, really cold this week. So I'm happy to be here. I'm happy to be able to move my hands. Roger Smith and Patrick Kinnick will be back with you shortly on BikeFortBend.com. We're brought to you by Archer Volkswagen, Next Level Urgent Care, the Needville Insurance Agency, First Tire and Automotive, and Xfinity. Xfinity Mobile is the best kept secret in wireless. We'll be right back. Next Level Urgent Care supports Fort Bend County sports and supports you whenever you're hurting. Next Level is here for the community. Open seven days a week, nine till nine, for you and your family at more than 30 Greater Houston locations, including Sugarland, Sienna, Greatwood, Longmeadow, and four in Katy. From Ow to Wow, Next Level Urgent Care has you covered. And if you're short on time, Next Level has an app to get you in line right away. Just text NLUC. APP to 313131 for next level urgent care. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Norman, before we start the surgery, I have some bad news. What is it, doctor? Well, I never graduated from med school. But the good news is, it's the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale. Now hurry, because new Xfinity customers can get 75 megabit internet for just $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And this will get your heart rate up. When you add Xfinity Mobile, you get the best price for two lines of Unlimited. I gotta get this deal. Plus, for a limited time, get $500 back with two new mobile lines. That's amazing, Doc. I know. I don't want to miss this deal. Let's reschedule. Doc. 
Ugh. Drop everything and get to the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale now through January 10th. Go to Xfinity.com slash Hello 2023. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Internet offer requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. After term, regular rates apply. Xfinity internet required for Xfinity Mobile compares Xfinity Unlimited intro to lowest price 5G plans of top three carriers. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Data thresholds may vary. Hello, I'm Gary Horn with Horn Solutions. We agree with energy analysts that the energy market has stabilized. We anticipate significant merger and acquisition activity. Good resources are scarce. Horn Solutions is positioned to assist you in accounting, finance, IT, and supply chain. Our staff can assist you with outsourcing, or we can supply you with resources to join your staff. Visit hornsolutions.net for details. Gary Horn is a highly successful businessman who has made a huge impact in people's lives, and he loves what he does for a living. That's a big reason why Gary Horn and Horn Solutions support Get a Great Gig. Get a Great Gig is a free job search consultation service that will help you find a job you love, whether it's to make more money or get personal fulfillment in the career of your choice. Email them at getagreatgig at gmail.com or on Twitter at getgreatgigs. First Tire and Automotive wishes you safe travels and a happy holiday season. So, with a hustle and bustle of shopping, cooking, and traveling this holiday season, it's important to make sure your vehicle is prepared as well. Check out these Santa savings. $20 off services over $100, $40 off services over $200, and $60 off services over $300. And tire specials. Yes, First Tire and Automotive has those too. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive with four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. What is Vipe Live? Vipe Live is one of the largest and most respected broadcast and live stream networks in the state of Texas. Vipe Live broadcasts any sport you can think of for youngsters of any age, from Pee Wee and Pop Warner to high school, club, college, semi-pro, and beyond. We also broadcast plenty of academic, fine arts, and community-related events as well, and now as partners with Flow Sports. Email us at info at vipemedia.com to find out more. Vipe Live, we bring your teams to you. All right, welcome back inside the gym at Austin High School. They're about to introduce the starters and begin this game between the Randall Lions, the brand new school in Lamar Consolidated ISD, and also the Austin Bulldogs. It's a non-district game as both teams try to stay sharp, get through the New Year's weekend, and then they will resume district play on Tuesday night. So the starters for the visiting Randall Lions. First of all, they have number zero, a 5'10 junior guard, Justice Ajibola. Paul Agba, where's number one? He's a 6'2 junior guard. Number three is Donnell Olivace. He's a junior, stands six feet, and also classified as a guard. Jackson Stubbs is a sophomore, stands 5'11", and he wears number 12. And Yanni Ibikunle is a freshman guard who stands 6'5". So he's a freshman, but he's had an early growth spurt, obviously. So Ibikunle, Stubbs, Olivace, Agba, and Ajibola for the Randall Lions. And for your Austin Bulldogs, they will start with Jonah Rebueno, a 5'8 junior. He wears number one. Wearing number two is Jordan Turner. He's a junior and stands 5'8". And we will step aside real quickly and we'll do the Star Spangled Banner and continue with you on VibeFortBend.com. Well, I guess I have time to give a couple more starters. We got Ethan Toe, 5'10", senior. He wears number three. And Cheyenne Patel is 6'4", and a sophomore. Michael Baines is also starting. He's 6'2".
All right, Roger Smith along with Patrick Kinnick. He is the color commentator. And Patrick, and speaking of colors, you may be the only person on the planet who does this, but you you seem to look forward to me describing the uniforms. And since you're the color commentator, I will tell everybody that you have the basically Las Vegas Raiders colors for the right. Raiders Alliance. They are the, yep. the famed silver and gray, uh, actually silver and black or gray and black, but you know, you get the picture. That's basically the color scheme that they have. And I think of Cibolo Steel, the Knights out of suburban San Antonio. They have that same color scheme. And your Austin Bulldog boys are wearing the home whites with the red letters and numerals outlined in black. So they've got the Texas Tech colors. And now your Austin Bulldogs! Well, obviously they have hired a very enthusiastic PA announcer. Let's listen in. The fans need to cheer louder, I think, Patrick. Michael Baines. And your dog assistants are Cameron Harvey, Lucia Heather, Vernon Jordan, and head coach by Chris O'Moore. Let's have a good game, y'all. All right, so we got Coach O'Moore. He's the basketball coach here at Austin, and of course, the Boys Campus Athletic. Coordinator is Coach Arrow, which is short for Arobanlo, Mike Arobanlo, and uh, he is in the gym today, along with the, I have to say, fairly small holiday crowd, and that is to be expected. A lot of people out of town, but we are ready to play basketball. So it is Ribueno, Turner, Toe, Patel, and Baines on the floor for the Bulldogs, who will be going from left to right to start this ball game. Glad you're with us here at Peaceful Bucolic Pheasant Creek. Patel in the center jump, and he almost controlled the tap, but he lost the battle, unfortunately, to Yanni Ibikunle. And now, first possession goes to Randall. They get it underneath to Paul Agba, who is hit as he goes up, but no foul called. It's just the ball out of bounds, and possession retained by these Randall Lions in their all-black uniforms. And up. Goes the shot, but it's blocked by Austin, and there's a held ball inside the paint, and the uh, possession arrow favors the Bulldogs. So they'll get a chance to score the first basket of this game. This is a double header. We had the girls game where the Austin girls defeated South Houston. So Toe brings it across the timeline, and there is Hassanse, he's in the game. Actually, I didn't get the starters exactly right. Hassanse starting. There's a shot launch from the corner. Patel in and out, no good, but the rebound to the dogs. Patel whipping around, gets it out there to Ribreno. And there's a long shot way off by Hassanse. And the rebound to the Randall Lions. And here comes Jackson Stubbs. Hands the ball off to Justice Ajibola. He's trying to make a re move around Toe. Launches the three. No good. Toe grabs the rebound for the Bulldogs. Nobody has scored yet. We've played a minute. Patel passes up the shot and then sends it to the left corner. And a three goes down through for Ramin Asanse. 5'9 senior. And that puts the dogs up by a score of three to nothing. He shot it from deep in the corner. Olivace now has it. He is guarded by Hassanse. Gives the ball up. Sends it over to Ajibola, makes his way to the corner, hands it off now to Agba. Agba can't get the shot, his pass is deflected by Hassanse, but run down by Olivace, so Randall still has possession. Little baby hook by Olivace, comes up short. Patel gets the rebound, throws an outlet pass, and Toe almost saves it. He almost ran over our table. Yeah, I was he, frightened there for an instant. He, uh, he had his eye on the table, trying to save us from disaster. I can't wait till he shoots a three because Scott Hamilton is going to be listening. Well, I'll send him the podcast link. You know, the skater analyst. I You'll get it is. when it happens. All right, so it is Randall trying to possess and score. And a nice little dime underneath for the first score of the game as Daniel Olivace 
feeds Paul Agba, but Austin quickly down the floor. Patel gives it up. Now they whip it around the horn, and a long shot by Ribueno. It is long. Fight for the rebound by Patel. He almost saved it, but it went out of bounds. He kind of saved it in a direction almost parallel to the baseline, but nobody there to gather it in. It is 3-2, Bulldogs on top of the visiting Randall Lions. Here goes Ajibola trying to get around Toe, still dribbling between the rings, moves to his right, drives, and scoops it up, rolls it off the glass and down through. Four to three, now the score. The Randall Lions claim the lead. Toe near the top of the key, sends it to Patel. Now Rebueno shoots. He misses everything, but Asante gets the rebound in the put pack, and he's fouled. By the way, if you're thinking about, all right, well, how tall are these teams? At least who they have on the floor right now. Patel is the only Bulldog. Correction, uh, we've got Baines. Baines was supposed to start. It was Hassanse. He's not six feet. So the only one over six feet who started this game is Patel. The free throw was good, right? Yep. So it's six to four. Austin is leading the Randall Lions and an offensive foul by Randall down at their end of the floor. They are, their offensive end of the floor. 5.06 to go in the first quarter. Dogs leading at 6-4. Rebueno gives it up to Hassanse. Loses control of the ball near the top of the key, but he does run it down. Side to side dribble to try and get away. Toe in the corner. He launches it. And it is off the back iron. No good. Too hard. And a long rebound comes out to Jacob Davis in for Randall. And he lays it up off the glass. Rebueno playing good defense, but it was just a good shot on the part of number five, Jacob Davis. Now Austin has the ball in a 6-6 game. Asante in the corner trying to get around his man. Gives it up near the circle, and he carried the basketball. You don't see that call all that often these days, but it's a turnover. Yeah, and he was six. affected by the heavy pressure from the Randall defender there, and he got the hand just a bit under the ball there to call that carrying the ball. And that was Ray Rodriguez applying the defensive pressure. Full court press now by the Dogs, but Randall has made it halfway to the midcourt line. Now they get it all the way across. Now they get it, they penetrate, and then kick it out to the corner, and the long three was on the way by Ray Rodriguez, but even though it's missed, Randall gets the rebound, and going up and trying to score is number 10, Ray Rodriguez. He's hammered to the floor, and he's going to get two shots. By the way, I don't know that I've seen that, Patrick. He was knocked down on the shot. And he immediately looks up and with both hands beckons his teammates to help him up. I guess he just didn't want to <laughs> get up on his own. Well, I guess that's the universal sign for give me a hand here. First of the free throws, in and out, no good. Still 6-6 six to six is our score. I got something for you, Roger. A question. It's a mysterious question for me. Maybe you can help me. We'll, we'll talk about it when we get a moment here. Rodriguez taking his time. Dogs fans in the crowd are barking, and it caused him to miss the second shot. Toe with a long pass to Rebueno. Kicks it back to the new guy, Jason Thomas. And now a three-pointer, no good by Jordan Turner. And the ball was fought for off after the miss, and it goes out of bounds, last touch by the Dogs. So the dogs do a lot of substituting. I gotta keep up with that. Full court press, Randall throws it down the floor, almost threw it out of bounds, and now it's in the hands of Jacob Davis. Goes through the paint, scoops it up, gets hit. The ball rolls off the rim, no good, but he is fouled in the act of shooting and he's gonna go to the line. Jacob Davis, just a sophomore, stands 5'9". So there are five players on the Randall roster who are over six feet. And on the Austin roster, you know, assuming all these heights are correct, they have four players who are over six feet. Jacob Davis hit the first free throw, missed the second one, and it's rebounded by the Dogs, Joshua Bakare. And now quickly down the floor, hammered as he goes to the hoop, is Jason Thomas, the 6'3 junior. Correction, he is Jason Thomas Jr. and academically he's a senior. 
And he goes to the line. You could be confused by that. <laughs> His first shot is good. So he's at 6-3. Bakari, 6-4. Cameron Warren in a 6-3. Raylan Holmes at an even 6 feet. You got Shyam Patel, 6-4, and Michael Baines, 6-2. He made both free throws. So Austin is now back in the lead, 8-7, to three, uh, eight to seven with 3.41 to go in the first quarter. And they continue to apply the full court press, but Randall breaks it and they come down the floor. They get it ahead to Alavache. He's dribbling between the rings, guarded by Toe, picks up his dribble, hands the ball off to Jacob Davis. At the left elbow, a little bounce pass inside and a beauty. Nice assist as he fed his big man, Yanni Ibikunle, the 6'5 freshman. It's 9-8, to eight. Randall on top. Now Toe dribbling. Toe has taken one three-point shot attempt, but that's all. And now deep in the corner, it is Hugh Rolls, football player, and he scores for the Austin Bulldogs to make it 11-9. That's a three. Toe with an attempt to steal on the full court press, but Rodriguez comes out of there with it for the Lions into the full court, and he gets it off to Ibi Kunle, and he scores underneath. Nice penetration by Rodriguez, drew the defense, handed it off to his big freshman teammate. It's 11 to 11. Now in the corner, Austin has it. Jordan Turner, Turner back to toe at the top of the key. And now another three from the corner. No good, this one attempt by Hugh Rolls. Back to toe, top of the key. Off the back iron, no good. And a slap at the rebound, and out of there comes Randall. Daniel Olivace gives the ball up, spins into the lane, gets it back. Now hands it to number 12, Jackson Stubbs. He tries, but cannot score. The dogs take it away, and here comes Ethan Toe. Ethan Toe looking around, drives inside the arc, jump stop near the right elbow. Now it is Jonah Robueno, kicks it back out to Jason Thomas. He can't score. Now it's back in the hands of Toe as there's good offensive board work by the dogs. There goes Robueno, puts it up inside and scores to break the tie and put the dogs up 13 to 11. Hugh Rolls applying the pressure on defense and a nice save and Jason Thomas forces a turnover. Toe to Rolls to Rebueno in the corner a little bit short and no good. Rebound Randall and quickly down the floor to Rodriguez ahead of everyone lays it in with the left hand and we're tied at 13. Less than a minute and a half to go in an action-packed first quarter. We'll take a break. This is VipeFortBend.com, your broadcast home for Fort Bend County High School sports. Norman, before we start the surgery, I have some bad news. What is it, doctor? Well, I never graduated from med school. But the good news is, it's the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale. Now hurry, because new Xfinity customers can get 75 megabit internet for just $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And this will get your heart rate up. When you add Xfinity Mobile, you get the best price for two lines of Unlimited. I gotta get this deal. Plus, for a limited time, get $500 back with two new mobile lines. That's amazing, Doc. I know. I don't want to miss this deal. Let's reschedule. Doc? Doc? Drop everything and get to the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale now through January 10th. Go to Xfinity.com slash Hello 2023. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Internet offer requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. After term, regular rates apply. Xfinity Internet required for Xfinity Mobile. Compares Xfinity Unlimited Intro to lowest price 5G plans of top three carriers. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Data thresholds may vary. Back in the Austin gym, the Bulldogs and the Randall Lions facing each other for the first time ever on the basketball court. And the score is 13 to 13 with 127 to go in quarter number one. Roger Smith and Patrick Kinnick with you. Any early impressions? Well, the, the Randall Lions are coming out fighting. It's not gonna be an easy one for the Bulldogs. They're gonna have to fight hard for this one. And the Lions doing a pretty good job handling the full court press. All right, so the dogs back on the floor, Rebueno. Throws the ball to the top of the key to Hugh Rolls. Drives over to the left. And now a launch three from the left corner is no good. That's Michael Baines taking his first shot. Out of there comes Randall. It's a one and done possession for the Dogs. And underneath the basket, in and out, no good. Jackson Stubbs with his attempt. And they get the follow and a score from Karan Evans. 6-2 freshman. Here comes Rebueno into the forecourt for the Dogs. 50 seconds to go in the quarter. They trail 15 to 13. Now it's Hugh Rolls moving to his left. Rodriguez guarding him. 
Here goes Robueno, throws a skip pass all the way over to the other side of the floor and the three is on the way and no good by Jordan Turner and a whistle and Randall is gonna get the ball back with 36.1 to go in the quarter, leading 15 to 13 because one of the dogs stepped on the baseline. Turner goes to the bench and now here we go. They haven't started the clock. Now they finally do. Rodriguez almost lost it inside. Now gets it knocked out of his hands. But last touch by the Bulldogs. It goes over the baseline. And so Randall will get the ball back in bounds as they make another substitution and bring in Olivace for the final 31.8. Quick catch and shoot by Olivace off the glass and good. Makes it 17 to 13. Biggest lead for Randall thus far. 24 seconds to go in the quarter. And Patel launches a three from the corner, missed everything. He was long on that one, 18 seconds to go. Here comes Randall quickly down the floor and a drive and a layup attempt by Ryan Holmes. He missed, but he was followed in. Karan Evans gets his second basket in about a 30 second span, seven seconds to go. It's 19-13, Randall kick back to Patel. Three from the top of the key, off the back iron, no good. Rolls, can't get a shot off in time to beat the buzzer on the put back attempt. So a nice flourish to the finish of the first quarter for the Randall Lions, and they lead it 19 to 13. This is VibeFortBend.com, and we'll be back with quarter number two. Hey, Fort Bend County fans, this is Bradley Stavenal with Neville Insurance Agency. Bradley is my insurance man. He can save you hundreds, if not thousands of dollars every year on your car insurance, home insurance, or flood insurance, or all three like he did for me. And Bradley, you are as Fort Bend County as they come, right? That's right. Fourth generation here in the Neville area in Fort Bend County, uh, taking care of folks over here for over 100 years here in uh, Fort Bend County. You can give him a call, you can go online, or he'll even come see you at the Needville Insurance Agency. Give him the number, Bradley. 979-793-7411. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. The nice folks at the scorer's table here at Austin pressing the adamant buzzer when you hear it pressed two or more times. That means they're tired of waiting for the teams to break up their timeout huddle. There is a shot from the corner to begin quarter number two, and it's good by Jackson Stubbs, the sophomore for Randall. They lead it now 22 to 13. Deep in the corner with Bueno off the back iron. The dogs keep shooting the threes, but they keep missing. And now Randall with another quick defensive rebound to bring the ball back up the floor. It is Donnell Olivacci sends the cross court pass over to Ajibola. Now he gets the ball back. He's between the rings and he gives it up one more time. Now he has it near the top of the key. Tries to go around toe. Stops. Passes off. Underneath. Layup. No good by Paul Agba. But a nice follow attempt. Yanni Ibikunle, the freshman, goes up and he's denied. But he is fouled and he will go to the line. It's hard to believe, Roger, that this fella here is a freshman. Boy, he's having a. he's got uh, two buckets, some solid rebounds. That, that time he was... Wrapped up by one of the Austin defenders. He rolls in that first free throw. But uh, what did you say? He was six foot five. Six five, and, and uh, when still, you're a freshman, still growing. <laughs> probably. <laughs> but he looks pretty solid, and he's going to miss the second free throw, however. Toe grabs the rebound for Austin. They trail 23 to 13. Bulldogs need to get those threes to start falling. Now they get the ball in the hands of Baines. Baines sends it to Hassan Say. Now to Toad, top of the key, makes his move, back inside the arc. Now he's got to give up the ball, and he has it stolen away from him by Stubbs. Here comes Randall on the run. Stubbs almost loses it, sends it over to the corner to Abi Jola. His three is no good. Rebound by Ibi Kunle, kicks it back out there to Ajibola, drives inside the arc. He's blocked, and here comes Austin on the run, three on two. There goes Baines to the rack and scores. That breaks the drought for the Austin Bulldogs and they trail it now 23 to 15. I think Austin has to take the ball to the basket more like that. That was a fast break, but there was a foul down there and as the big guy got... Uh, <laughs> yeah, the big guy for... Well, there are a lot of big guys, but right now the big guy for Austin is Patel. 
He kind of landed on his shoulder there, and he... He is being yeah. uh, the Yanni Ibikunle, it's and you don't want to stunt the growth of the 6'5 freshman <laughs> by landing on his shoulder. Well, you certainly don't want, uh, you don't want to do that in front of Coach Eisenhower because he's counting on him for the next three years after this year. That, before the shot here, so the, here they come. Quick release, three from the left corner by Abijola, and he misses. Dogs get the rebound. Quickly down the floor, Hassan Say gives it up to Ribueno. Now they move around the perimeter. Toe from the left corner, thought about the three, didn't pull the trigger. Now he dribbles to his right. They spread it out a little bit. Here goes Toe, moving near the left elbow of the free throw lane. Now it's Hassan Say, and now it is Baines, a three from the corner. And it is no good. No, the shot, the shot went in, Roger. It did and, go in, okay. And uh, there was a foul on the three-point shot. Man, that's embarrassing for me to not well. see that because <laughs> the problem is I haven't memorized the roster yet, and I was looking down to make sure it was Baines. Yes, yep. And I looked down just long enough to avoid seeing that he made the shot. So is this a four-point play? Yes, it is. And the Dogs needed that. They're now within four, 23-19. to 19. Hassan Say is guarding Stubbs. Stubbs kills his dribble, throws a cross-court pass. Now it's Olavache getting into the forecourt, but almost lost it. And he went over and back thanks to the aggressive defense of Hassan Say. How, how is that over and back when the ball was tipped over by the defender? Ask the official. Uh, I think <laughs> rules-wise, <laughs> you have a very valid question. It looked like it was knocked away by the Austin. But anyway, Austin has the ball and get a break. I'm not in a, a position to Here answer. Here it is. Toe launches the three from 25 feet plus. And it's off no good. Still down 23 to 19. Randall quickly into the forecourt. And there goes Olivace. Kicks it over there to Ibi Kunle. Pulls up with a two-pointer. And it rattles out no good. Long rebound comes down to Ibi Kunle. Tries the follow. Doesn't get it. Gets an offensive rebound. And scores on his third wow. try. That was an impressive effort on his part. Six-point lead, 25 to 19. Randall on top of Austin. Approaching the five-minute mark in this second period. Toe. Still has not hit one of his famous threes. Rebueno back to toe. Right wing launches it. Back iron, no good. Rebound comes down to Ajibola. And here he comes down the floor, takes it all the way to the rack. Lays it off the glass with the left hand. 27 to 19, it's an eight point game. They had it down to four and then a little flurry here from Randall again. Toe walks it across the midcourt stripe, wants a pick, moves to his left. Still dribbling, now gets it to Baines. Baines on the right wing, now Ribueno. Quick release, three, back iron, no good. Have they hit any threes yet? Uh, I don't think they maybe have. Maybe one. Quickly down the floor, it is Olivace. Tries to score, but the defense is there for the Bulldogs. However, they get an offensive rebound, and there goes Jackson Stubbs to the top of the key. Sends it over to Ajibola, and he gets the ball knocked out of his hands, last touched by Ribueno. Jonah playing good is aggressive it, defense with a quick hand. Is it me, Roger, or, or am I seeing it the same as you? Uh, the Randall Lions are really getting to a lot of the loose balls. They seem a little like a step ahead of uh, the Bulldogs right now. Yes, but I would also say a lot of long rebounds, and sometimes those are just kind of a yep. roll of the dice as to who gets it. That's true. Randall with an offensive foray. Jacob Davis spinning into the lane, but I guess he traveled or either just simply lost the ball out of bounds. Yeah, he spun around. He's going to try to make a pass, and uh, the way the pass went, it went out of bounds instead of toward his teammate. Here comes Austin. Rebueno brings it across the midcourt stripe as we meet the four-minute mark. We're halfway through the second quarter. 27-19, Randall on top. Austin has been working that perimeter game. They haven't been able to get it inside. Rebueno now to toe, top of the key. Rebueno drives into the arc, kicks it back out in the hands of somebody whose number is not on our Bulldogs roster. And now deep in the corner, Rebueno, the three off the back iron, no good. They're long with just about yep, all of there them. There it is, yep. Three and a half minutes to go, and then quickly down the floor, Randall, shot blocked by uh, Jason Thomas. He blocked the shot of Jacob Davis. And like you said, Roger, those long rebounds oftentimes lead to a fast break for the other team, like that instance right there. Still Randall ball. There goes Ray Rodriguez. A little floater off the glass with the left hand from about 10 feet away, and he almost stole the inbounds pass. He kind of blindly threw his hand back there and knocked it out of bounds. What's he? Oh. 
He called a delay of game warning. I don't know oh, if you saw goodness. it that way, Roger. No, no, no. That should not be delay of game. He, he was just blindly trying to deflect the inbounds pass while yeah. his back was to the ball. That's yeah. all that was. Uh, That's a ridiculous and Coach play. Eisenhower has a perplexed look on his face, but it's a 10-point lead again for, for the Randall Lions. Matches their biggest advantage. Now Jordan Turner has it. Now deep in the corner. His toe on the near side drives along the baseline. Kills his dribble. His pass is deflected. Randall fighting for it, and they got it. No, they... Boy, what he, hustle on the yeah. part of Donnell Olivace, but he stepped on the sideline as he basically beat um, Jordan Turner to the yeah. ball. He, he just outraced him to it, and unfortunately for him, he had a toe on the line there uh, that saved the, the dogs from another possible layup against them. Bueno meets a double team and passes it off to Turner. Now deep in the corner, it's Hugh Rolls, drives in, kicks it back out. Toe, three on the way, uh, no good. Patel fights for the rebound, and nice he pass. gets the ball from his teammate and scores. So it came off the hands of Patel. Jordan Turner bounced past it to him in heavy traffic, and he scored from in close. It's 29-21. to 21. Quickly down the floor come the Randall Lions. And Yanni Ibikunle, who shows that he has wisdom beyond his years in drawing fouls, he goes to the rack. He's fouled, and he will go to the line on the missed shot. Well, he's not playing like a freshman. Um, to his benefit, there's not a whole lot of size against him. So he's pretty much the tallest guy out there. So missed that the helps first, him. Missed the first free throw. By the way, what did Al McGuire, the great color commentator, I was say the same about thing. freshmen? What did he say about freshmen? The, they become sophomores. There you go. <laughs> the best thing about freshmen is they become sophomores. The <laughs> other favorite thing that he ever said that I liked was Sidney Moncrief played for the Arkansas Razorbacks. Mm -hmm. He said, Moncrief got up so high on that one that he was burned on reentry. <laughs> Yeah, he was a good one. He had a lot of great lines. If the ball rattled around on the rim and didn't go down, he called it a cryer. A crier? A crier. Yeah. Second free throw was missed by Ibikunle, but his teammate grabbed the rebound and put it back up and missed the shot, but it was knocked out of bounds. So Turner, uh, Turner, Randall, Randall will maintain possession. I have a cousin named Randall Turner. That's why I said that. <laughs> Quickly in, Jackson Stubbs drives into the paint. His shot off the glass spins out. Hugh Rolls almost grabbed the rebound. It ended up going to the hands of Michael Baines. Now Hugh Rolls hands it to Baines between the rings. Deep in the corner, it is Turner looking for his shot. He meets a double team. They need a timeout or something. There is a whistle and it's a held ball and the arrow favors the dogs, fortunately. With 2.18 to go in the second quarter, they're down 29 to 21. Ethan Toe to throw it in along the baseline, throws it over everybody to Rebueno. Wide open for a three, high rebound. Comes down to the dogs, roll, shoots a two, and it's good. 29 to 23. Here comes Randall running between defenders and getting the ball quickly down the floor against the full court press. There goes Ajibola. His shot rolls off no good, and rebound comes down to Baines of the Bulldogs. They trail by six. 150 to go. Toe drives in. Near the top of the key, still dribbling. Kicks it back out. Now it is a three-point attempt from the left corner, but Jordan Turner has it swatted out of his hands. And who was that? Was that Ryan Holmes or Karan Evans? I think it was Holmes who made that block. Nice job of making the block and not committing the foul. So it's simply out of bounds, and Baines throws it all the way over everybody to Rebueno. Toe thinks about the three, goes inside the arc, shoots a two, and it's good. The threes weren't working, so he stepped inside the arc and scored to make it 29-25. Dogs down by four. Here comes Randall. Jackson stubs into the forecourt. Now there goes Ajibola. Pulls up at the right elbow. Shoots from the free throw line. No good. A tip attempt by Randall. They still have possession on an offensive rebound. Shot no good by Stubbs. Ball up in the air. Whistle. What do they call? Ball hit, ball hit the standard. Okay. Hit the, the top uh, of the you know part of the basket that's, well, not the backboard. Well, <laughs> the, uh, the part that's yeah. holding it from the ceiling. All right. Hassan Say launches a three for the Bulldogs. And now all of a sudden we've got a close game. They're down by one, 29-28.
as we near the one minute mark of this first half. Here goes Ajibola side to side trying to get across the timeline. Finally does. Gets it in there to Stubbs. Stubbs lays it off for his teammate Karan Evans. His shot rolls off. Continuing to dominate the offensive board are the Randall Lions, but Austin finally gets a rebound. There goes Rebueno, lays it up. No good, but he steals it back or tries to. And he's called for a foul. He reached in on Jacob Davis, who didn't, I don't think Davis realized that uh, Rebueno was right there behind him. 39.9 to go. It looks like the Lions are in the bonus, and that'll send Davis to the line for a one and one. Now, how many Bible names do we have on the Randall Lions um, roster as the first free throw is good? You've got Paul, Daniel, Jacob. That's it. I thought it was going to be more than three. You see three and you think, well, there, there's yeah. probably at least one more. There's only three. Second free throw also good. 31-28 Randall. Dogs inbound it. Clock has not started. Now it does. 36 seconds to go. Ethan Toe. Dribbling with his back to his defender. And there's a three. Hassan Say from the corner in and out. No good. Rebound Randall. Here comes Jacob Davis pushing it down the floor. But it is stolen. Stolen by Turner. 22 seconds to go. Quickly ahead to Toe. Toe drives in behind the back. Dribble steps back behind the arc. Now gives it up to Baines. Baines three on the way. No good. And it bounces up and it hits the guy wire that is connected to the pulley that you use to raise the basket. <laughs> And in that case, means it's out of bounds. That's right. <laughs> 12 seconds to go. Randall with the ball. Up 31 to 28. Side to side dribble and a layup from the left side. Donnell Olivace. Five seconds to go. Dogs hurrying the ball down the floor. Toe, 30 footer. No, off the front iron. And we're finished with the first half and it is 33 to 28. The Randall Lions on top of the Austin Bulldogs and before we take a little break here, Patrick, anything you want to say? Any notes or observations on the way the first half ended? Oh, a couple of couple of thoughts. One, um, the Lions are here to play, and the Bulldogs are in for a fight, so to speak. And number two, the Bulldogs, I guess, are they a real, are they uh, live by the three, die by the three type team? They seem to be that way. They have they've been had, for the first two periods. They've got about twenty three sure. hoisted up, and they've only made a couple. So. That's going to be tough for them. So anyway, uh, it's going to be a tough game for the dogs. they got to start hitting some of those shots and maybe taking the ball to the basket a little bit. By the way, we always want you to feel like you are here inside the gym with us. And so we're going to tell you what the halftime entertainment is going to be for the folks who are in the stands. It's two young men appearing to be about ages maybe nine and eight. And uh, maybe it's going to be a, a two-on-one matchup. I'm not sure. So they're going to play, and if they finish, then there will be some in, someone going from end to end with a broom, yeah. sweeping the floor. That was halftime entertainment when Patrick and I were in high school. All right, we'll take a break. 33-28, Randall leads Austin, and Patrick and I will keep you amused when we return. Plus, he'll have some statistical information. You won't find any of that amusing. He'll be back. Next Level Urgent Care supports Fort Bend County sports and supports you whenever you're hurting. Next Level is here for the community. Open seven days a week, nine till nine, for you and your family at more than 30 Greater Houston locations, including Sugarland, Sienna, Greatwood, Longmeadow, and four in Katy. From Owl to Wow, Next Level Urgent Care has you covered. And if you're short on time, Next Level has an app to get you in line right away. Just text NLUC. APP to 313131 for Next Level Urgent Care. First Tire and Automotive wishes you safe travels and a happy holiday season. So, with a hustle and bustle of shopping, cooking, and traveling this holiday season, it's important to make sure your vehicle is prepared as well. Check out these Santa savings. $20 off services over $100, $40 off services over $200, and $60 off services over $300. And tire specials. Yes, First Tire and Automotive has those too. Check out the website firsttireandauto.com for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive with four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. 
All right, we are back, and the halftime entertainment has changed slightly. It is now a two-on-two -two game between elementary age boys who are wearing hoodies and long pants, except two of them, uh, one of them has now shed his hoodie, and they continue to play basketball. And I will say, Patrick, I look around the gym. People are actually watching and enjoying watching these young men play. So yeah, what you, and a little bit of cheering going on after that shot was made there by one of them. They all appear to be from Randall, by the way. Okay, so what do you got statistically? Well, I don't have anything really statistically except for points. points. <laughs> so that's okay, guess, but I all that's... I know is that uh, the dogs are ice cold from the three-point yeah. line. I'd, it'd be interesting to know what their shooting percentage is. It's not very good, especially from the three-point line, as you said. Jason Thomas for the Bulldogs has two. Uh, Rebueno has none. Did he make a shot? I thought he made a shot. Maybe I missed, missed that one. I recall that he did, but um, I can't say that yeah. with certainty. Baines, let's see. Uh, Turner with two. Ethan Toe has two. He has yet to make a three-pointer. Uh, Patel with two. Baines with six. Has, 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 Hasanse. Has, Hasanse. 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 Hasanse has nine. And rolls with five. That is your Austin Bulldog point total. They have 28. At halftime, and for the Lions, oh, a Ajibola. Ajibola. Ajibola with four. Agba with oh, two. Oh. Olivache, number three. Olivache with four. Davis, five. Rodriguez, four. Stubbs, three. Evans, four. And the big freshman. Ibikule. Thanks, Roger. <laughs> he has seven. And that's the point totals for the uh, prospective teams. The score at halftime is 33 to 28. The Randall Lions uh, on top of the Bulldogs. And the future Randall Lions, who are now elementary school age, still out there playing. And if you hear a big cheer from the crowd, it'll be because one of these young men scored. Okay, so I wanted to bounce something off of you while we're inside a basketball arena. It seems like the appropriate thing to do. So we noticed that some players now uh, usually see at least one in every game, whether it's boys' game or girls' game, with two shoes that aren't the same color. All my shoes growing up, I just kind of I never thought outside the box, and, and I just always bought shoes where both of them were the same color. And we were thinking about, over the years, ideas have come out by the way, no one has scored, but there is some rough play. <laughs> it's a lot of action. Uh, the, the fellow who just went down was looking for a foul call. He gestured for the foul call, but there's no so referees out there. What if we were to make a <laughs> list of products that people came up with that were really useless or just why did they become so, a deal, a thing, and yet people start buying them in large numbers? Like the Pet Rock. You remember yeah, the Pet Rock? I do remember the Pet Rock. Do you think that was... Do you think that was a financial boon for someone? Absolutely. Somebody who had the audacity to uh, think, you know, we could just put a rock in a box and say it's important. And how about the mood ring? Yeah. Boy, Roger, really drawn back into the uh, archives Okay, here. but what I was going to lead up to is there is a certain entrepreneur. He's kind of my hero because he came up with a dumb idea, something that's pretty much worthless other than the paper that it's on. And he has made a very good living, and I know he must have because I keep hearing his commercials on radio. I've been hearing them for at least 30 years. Okay, He's what is Rocky it? Rocky Moselle of the International Star Registry. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> if you send him about 60 bucks, yeah, he will send you a piece of paper yeah. and say that they named a star after you and that your name is on file in the United States Copyright Office. Oh, an 18-foot jumper just went in at halftime here. Yes, and it will not change the score of our game, <laughs> but it is putting the smiles of faces. So, yeah, the, our, the here star the registry, gym. that is quite a clever idea. And yeah, they don't give you anything except the little piece of paper. And then when you look on the sky, can you really see the star? That can you, you build you a house on your star? <laughs> but you have it. <laughs> you get to have it. But you, <laughs> for all you know, Patrick... 30,000 people own the same star I that know, you do. I know, for all we know. That's so exactly right. So for Rocky right. Moselle, he just has enough gall to to make people pay for a star that probably has burnt out by now. Well, the other thing it's is ridiculous. about, one good thing about his little uh, 
entrepreneurship there is that he's never going to run out of product. He will never run out of stars. That's true. <laughs> but I'm saying he can keep selling the same star over and over. <laughs> he doesn't have to, but he could. <laughs> okay, now. A good one, Roger. That's I, a good one. I'm going to uh, change the subject to something that's pretty important. And it will affect the lives of people at Austin High School and all the other 6A uh, high schools in Fort Bend ISD who have uh, boys or girls in the basketball program. Because of the shortage of officials, it is so hard for these public school and private school entities to find enough officials to call these games. Heads once up, we, Roger. Heads up. Oh, boy. Once, we get, uh, <laughs> once we get to near the end of January, all of the basketball games between Class 6A teams in Fort Bend ISD are going to be on Wednesday and Saturday. So normally you have the Tuesday, Friday kind of rhythm to the basketball schedule. So it's going to stay that way like it normally does. And then we get to, I think it's January 24th or 5th maybe. The 5A teams like Marshall, Willow Ridge, Kempner, as well as these Randall Lions and Fulcher and Foster and others, they're going to keep playing Tuesday, Friday, but the 6A schools will switch to Wednesday, Saturday. So the good news about that is we get to bring people more games. We can do four games a week instead of just two, which we love to do at VitefortBend.com. But, uh, you know, there might be some moms and some dads who arrange their work schedule so they could be at a Tuesday and Friday game. They need to be ready for the schedule to switch to Wednesday, Saturday. Is that going to be is that switching in mid mid season or mid -season. is it already on the schedule? Mid season. Well, wow. I mean, I mean, it's what the way the schedule was made out. Right. But they knew they had this problem. So if you are a young man or a young woman, it doesn't matter. Look into being an official. We really need them. We can't have these games without officials. Speaking Good point. of officials, nice. they have said start the third quarter, and we have Randall going to the basket. To our right, and then a pull-up jumper by Yanni Ibikunle. Very smooth by the 6'5 man-child, and he makes it 35-28. to 28. Austin quickly another four. Robueno shoots a three from the left corner and misses everything. Quickly ahead, it's three on none, and a slam dunk with two hands by Justice Ajibola. And Randall starts the third quarter hot. Toe launches a three, and he hits one. That makes it 37-30. We played less than 40 seconds. A lot of action already. So Randall with the basketball. Quick move to the hoop. And a floater with the left hand by Jackson Stubbs. Ball loose. Rebueno grabs it for Austin. And what did he do? Was he fouled or did he commit a I violation? Think was, I think he was fouled here by number 12. All right. I think so Stubbs committed the foul. So Stubbs reached in to try and get a steal near midcourt. And things have calmed down a little bit, but I have a feeling the action will pick right back up. There goes Rebueno, stops near the top of the key. Toe launches another three. He's feeling it, but he's long again. No good. Baines grabs the rebound. Toe almost pulls the trigger, moves inside the arc. Floater, no good. Left it short. Rebound to Ibi Kunle, and here comes Randall. Side to side dribble with Olivace. He's a real playmaker, and he gives the ball up to Ajibola, trying to get around Toe. Kills his dribble, now sends it between the rings as they reset the defense with Stubbs. Stubbs moves into the circle, kills his dribble, guarded by Patel. Now a pass that goes through the hands of Olivace, but he saved it. Randall still with the possession, there goes Olivace. Turn around, in the lane, and out, no good. Rebound to Austin. Baines grabs it, now quickly ahead to Toe. Two on one, Toe, the lane is good. And it's 37 to 32. And now Randall mishandles the inbounds pass. Robueno has it. Kicks it back to Hassanse. Launches a three from the corner. It's good. The game tightens up. Archie Bell and the Drells. Houston, Texas. Cue them because it is a tighter game. 37 to 35. 6.04 to go. And Randall takes a timeout. We shall return. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open. And our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. 
We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. All right, Patrick. Will this dog's run that has brought them within 37 to 35 be a little flash in the pan, or will they be able to keep it going? We're going to find out. You're going to bring it to us no, here. you're going to tell me. Make a prediction. Uh, yes, I think <laughs> they're going to continue it. All right, Randall looks determined, though. Here they come quickly down the floor. A nice dish, but they can't finish. Jackson Stubbs fed Paul Agba, but the shot was missed. And now it's Hassan Say from the left corner. Three on the way. Yes! And the Dogs have the lead at 38-37. to Ajibola pressured in the backcourt. Good things happened when the Dogs did the full court press in the first half. Toe reaches in, commits the foul as Olivace brings it down the near sideline. Are you feeling that breeze coming from that door, Roger? I'm feeling a breeze from somewhere, <laughs> but that door's been open a long yeah, time. Yeah, I know. It's all of a sudden I'm feeling that. Well, good start for the third quarter for the Bulldogs. Grandel brings it in. Ribueno is guarding Ajibola. Stops his dribble. Passes off to Ibi Kunle. He's in the corner. The big man looks inside. Little jump stop floater rattles around and down. Jackson Stubbs on a nice feed from Ibi Kunle. That puts Randall back ahead, 39-38. Now Baines has it all the way over to Hassan Say in the right corner. He's short with that one. And the rebound comes down to Randall as Stubbs grabs it. Hands it off to Ibi Kunle and then gets it back. Into the forecourt he goes, guarded by Rebueno. There is a move, a little jump stop, and Toe almost steals it away from Ajibola, who received a pass from Ab uh, Agba, and he almost looked like he had not been expecting that pass. That was a tough foul call against Toe there. The ball was loose, and they were both grabbing for it, and he got whistled for it. Olivace throws it in. Quick release shot is no good. Ajibola from the corner. Ibi Kunle, nice feet underneath after he grabbed the offensive rebound, but he threw it away. I said nice feed because I thought he had a teammate there. <laughs> there was nowhere, no one there to receive the pass. If there had been someone there, it would have been a beauty. Exactly. I think you're a little bit shielded by the referee or something on that one. Yeah, that, that would be my only plea. All right, Patel has it in the right corner for the Austin Bulldogs. Now it is Baines, top of the key. Moves to the right elbow, now backs up, still dribbling. Now Rebueno. Now over in the corner, Turner. Long pass to Patel, launches the three, back iron, no good. Fight for the rebound and it comes down to Ajibola. Here comes Randall on the run. They don't have numbers, but Ajibola pulls up. His shot is no good, the two pointer missed off the back iron. Jason Thomas grabs the rebound for Austin, moves it into the forecourt, hands to Baines. Dogs attacking, Patel from the right corner, three, short, no good. Rebound though, comes down to Thomas. And a blocking foul on Randall with 4.11 to go in the third. Lions lead it 39-38. So it's a foul on the floor. So Jordan Turner's just going to throw it in. Nobody guarding him. Over everybody to Rebueno. Launches a three. Top of the key. Off the glass. And good. 41-39 is our new score. We hit the four-minute mark. Ajibola moving it up the floor. Rebueno now pressuring Stubbs. Stubbs drives in toward the hoop. And a whistle before he makes contact with Jason Thomas. That, that foul wasn't on Thomas, was it? It was, it was on, on whoever uh, encountered him. It was on Rebueno, Rebueno I believe, okay. yes. Ray Rodriguez throwing it in for Randall. Over everybody to Stubbs between the rings. Surveying the situation, now gets it to Rodriguez, drives the baseline, turns around, gets it back over to Jacob Davis, runs out of room, gives it to Rodriguez, jump stop, loses the ball, does lose the ball, but then, unfortunately for the dogs, Jason Thomas didn't grab it. It was yeah. right there. He thought a teammate was going to get it. Well, it hit him in the face, and then he just went up the court. Well, maybe uh, he was stunned from getting hit in the face, he and that's why he didn't grab the ball. It was a surprise hit to the, to the face there. Anyway... Lions come out with it. Patel comes out and Hugh Rolls enters the ball game. And now Randall with the ball, trailing 41 to 39. There goes Ajibola, 
Guarded by Rolls, and a pass nearly stolen by the Dogs, but still possession for Randall as Jacob Davis has it. Moves left near the elbow. He falls down and loses the ball, and it is picked up by Thomas. Here come the Dogs. Ray Bueno passes up the three. Rolls with the three. Yes! Roll with it, baby, and it's 44 to 39. The Dogs have a lead of five. They continue to apply the press, but this time Randall breaks it easily. Stopping near the free throw line is Rodriguez, but throws a pass that was too hard for Stubbs off his hands and out of bounds, and the Dogs get it back with 2.59 to go in the third. What was the Lions' biggest lead? I know they ten. led by at least, okay, yeah, 10. They led by 10, yep. And now they are down by five. Yeah, the five-point deficit for the Bulldogs has turned into a five-point lead. Here comes Ribueno, hands it to Rolls. Rolls is between the rings, Rodriguez guarding him. Now a long pass in the right corner, Turner launches the three, off the front iron, no good, rebound Rolls, and they whip it around the perimeter. Ribueno now has it, wants to shoot a three, I think, I just get that feeling, but his pass is deflected out of bounds as Ray Rodriguez showed quick hands. Manos rapidos. <laughs> Two and a half minutes to go, Ribueno. Hands it over to Jason Thomas. Now a drive down the baseline and the ball deflected out of bounds by Randall. A long baseline pass intended for Rolls went out of bounds. And Rolls will throw it in from near the corner. Actually, Turner steps up and he will now throw it in. He has a very small window in, into which he needed to get it. He did get it in to Ribueno. Now Rolls. Now there goes Thomas. Bounce pass, Rebueno, quick release of the three, and it's good. I think he actually bounced it off the glass, and it's an eight-point lead for the Dogs. A reach-in foul on Austin, as it was Jacob Davis quickly moving the ball down the floor for Randall. The, uh, the Lions are going to be in the bonus here pretty soon as the Bulldogs pick up their fifth team foul here with two Minutes and 11 seconds to play in the third quarter. Hassan Say comes back on the floor for Rolls. And Randall inbounds the ball, trailing 47 to 39. Aji Bola looking for a, an open teammate. Now Ryan Holmes has it in the corner. Ray Rodriguez drives in the lane. Back out to Holmes who gets blocked. He does recover the basketball, but slides as he does and he's called for traveling. What a nice block there. But was it Turner who made that block? It happened so fast, and there were two dogs right there. I honestly can't I think can't it was Turner, you. and what a block it was. He blocked the three-point attempt. Almost sounded like a blocked punt. It was very solid. Yes, it was. Turner now, Rebueno, now Hassan Say. Over in the corner, Thomas. Hassan Say has it. Drives the left elbow. Now it's Turner from the left corner. The threes are falling in. It's good. It's 50 to 39. Since trailing by 10, the Dogs have outscored Randall by 21. There goes Ajibola, quick to the rack, no good. Rebound, Hassan Say gets out of the crowd, quickly down the floor. There goes Thomas, backdoor layup is no good. He was disrupted nicely by the Randall defense. Three on none, two-hand jam by Ajibola. That's his second two-hand jam dunk in the third quarter. 50 to 41, Dogs still lead, Hassan Say into the paint. Backs it back to, uh, leaves it for Rebueno, shoots the three, no good. Now Hassan say the three, it's also no good. And now the rebound to Holmes of Randall. Here comes Ray Rodriguez. Good defense by the Dogs as they get back quickly. But here is Holmes launching one. Actually, he passed it inside to Yanni Ibikunle, who's been quiet lately, and he gets fouled by a dog who just entered the game, Raylon Holmes. Don't know if there's a relation between Raylon Holmes of Austin and Ryan Holmes of Randall. Or Larry Holmes of Easton, Pennsylvania. Well, that sequence uh, started with a nice block by Jason Thomas of the Dogs. Wow. And the ball uh, was loose, and there was a loose ball foul, I guess, on the Dogs. Several. On Holmes. Sorry about that. Several substitutions for Randall. They sent in a whole bunch of people. All at once, and I can't really tell you who all of them are. I'll do my best. Olivace inbounds the ball to Jacob Davis, and his three hits nothing but net. 
That makes it 50 to 44. Randall making its comeback. Now Hansa say quickly down the floor for the dogs. Now it is a long three by Rebueno and he matches it. It is 53 to 44. 29 seconds to go in quarter number three. Randall would like to forget quarter number three. Here they come quickly down the floor. Stubbs gets it inside. Easy layup, Paul Agba. And a whistle. I'm not sure what's going on. Agba did a great great job of just catching that ball that was coming right at his face. He got Raylan. his hands up in time to make the catch and then laid it in for the basket. Raylon Holmes comes off. He was not in there for long. He's replaced by Baines. And here come the dogs trying to get the last basket of quarter number three. 14 seconds to go. There goes Turner trying to get around the pick. Now sends it to the left corner, Ribueno. Ribueno bounces it to Turner. He's open. He launches it. It's long. No good. Ball goes out of bounds with 2.6 to go. 53 to 46 is the Austin lead. Ball goes out of bounds, so Randall will try to quickly advance down the floor and score. Got to get it out of his hand. That would have been too late. The shot by Danel Olivace. And the third quarter ends. 53-46 dogs. We will back, be back for the final eight minutes. Norman, before we start the surgery, I have some bad news. What is it, doctor? Well, I never graduated from med school. But the good news is, it's the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale. Now hurry, because new Xfinity customers can get 75 megabit internet for just $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And this will get your heart rate up. When you add Xfinity Mobile, you get the best price for two lines of Unlimited. I gotta get this deal. Plus, for a limited time, get $500 back with two new mobile lines. That's amazing, doc. I know. I don't want to miss this deal. Let's reschedule. Doc. Doc. Drop everything and get to the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale now through January 10th. Go to Xfinity.com slash Hello 2023. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Internet offer requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. After term, regular rates apply. Xfinity Internet required for Xfinity Mobile. Compares Xfinity Unlimited Intro to lowest price 5G plans of top three carriers. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Data thresholds may vary. Welcome back. It's a seven-point game, but we've had several lead changes in this game, so I kind of think it's going to get at least interesting before we get to the finish. What do you think, Patrick? Well, all I know is the Bulldogs scored 25 points in the third quarter. To they how many for the Lions? The Lions scored uh, 13. But the Bulldogs scored almost as many points in the third quarter as they did in the whole first half. Ethan Toe dribbling on the first possession of the third quarter. Then Baines launches a three in and out from the top of the key. And here comes Randall. And a great play by Baines to deflect a pass that would have gotten to Agba. And he probably would have had an easy basket. But instead, Randall will have to keep working in order to earn a score on this possession. Agba dragging his back foot, almost traveled. But now there is a blocking foul on Turner. He didn't think so, but he's whistled for his contact with Olivace. Well, the, the Lions are in the bonus now for the rest of the ball game. That could come into play as a factor here. Olivace's first free throw rattles around and goes down through. Off the front iron, then glass, then bounced a couple more times and nestled into the net. There you go. I need to work on better verbs during 2023. Nestled is a good one. And it caroms off the back iron. No good on the second free throw, but Olivace gets it back. Now Turner steals it away from him. Here come the dogs. Rubueno sends it to Hassanse. Can't get his shot off. Now a pass deflected. And Randall almost had it, but Hassanse sends it to Turner. Passed up the three in the corner, and the ball went off his knee out of bounds. What a well, flurry. It was a flurry. Uh, I noticed that the Austin Bulldogs had a, looked like they had a chance for a layup opportunity. And instead of that, they toss it out for the three. And sometimes you rely on that three just a little too much, I think. They press Randall, but Randall gets it into the forecourt. Olivace, fade away two, no good. Rebound, stripped away by Rebueno. Here he comes quickly down the floor. Turner 
Jump stop, didn't shoot the three from the left corner. Now Toe is in the game. He's between the rings, and he's looking for an opportunity to get that, that three ball hand hot again. He's a long way from the basket, trying to draw out the defense of Paul Agba. Moves toward the right corner, and Toe is still dribbling. Want to watch out, don't want to get a five second call. He is still dribbling. Kicks it back out to Hassan Say. Now they're going to pass the ball around a little bit in the four-corner offense. They're going to try to draw him out of that zone defense, it looks like. There's a neighborhood not far from here called the four corners, but now they're in the four corners offense. <laughs> Hassan Say, he's dribbling, guarded by Agba. Rebueno moves toward the right corner, draws a double team, gets it to Turner. Now Toe, three on the way! Off the iron, no good, rebound goes all the way back to Toe. Now Baines has it. He's playing catch with Toe. Now they get it to Rebueno over there on the right side. Under six minutes to go in the game, and it's 53 to 47 dogs. That was the score at the end of three quarters. There goes Toe, goes around his man, and he is getting his shot swatted away. Aji Bola knocked it away. Turner steals it away. Now Toe gets an un uncontested layup. And it's good to make it 55 to 47. Here comes Randall quickly down the floor as Ajibola beats the defense, rises high above them, and finger rolls it in for a basket that makes it 55 49. We'll take a break. 5.34 to go. This is VibeFortBend.com. First Tire and Automotive wishes you safe travels and a happy holiday season. So, with a hustle and bustle of shopping, cooking, and traveling this holiday season, it's important to make sure your vehicle is prepared as well. Check out these Santa savings. $20 off services over $100, $40 off services over $200, and $60 off services over $300. And tire specials. Yes, First Tire and Automotive has those too. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive with four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. FirstTireAnauto.com. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. We're back. The Bulldogs inbounded the ball, and they have it leading 55 to 49, less than five and a half minutes to go in the game. Hassan Say with a side-to-side -side dribble, dribbling between the feet, drives into the top of the key. Al turns around and gives the ball back to Rebueno. Rebueno looking for someone, but he's still dribbling. Now it's a bounce pass to Baines. Baines trying to shake his man, the big freshman Ibi Kunle, drives to the hoop, and he did get a step on Ibi Kunle, and he scored. It's 57 to 49, dogs back up by eight. Randall quickly into the floor, Hassan Say steals it. He's going to the hoop, he goes up, and he spins it in off the glass. Jacob Davis, it wasn't his mistake, but he was trying to chase Hassan Say down. It didn't work out. 59 to 49, the dogs now have a 10 point lead. Olivache, guarded by Hassan Say. Tries to get it to Ibi Kunle. Now he just throws it all the way back out to Jacob Davis and they reset the offense. Under four and oh a half boy. minutes to go. Mm. And a ticky-tack foul called on Ethan Toe. Come on now. All the contact out there and then that one's the one that's called. It's frustrating for Toe, I'm sure. Nonetheless, Davis will go to the line to shoot a one and one. Toe is sore. So, sore toe? <laughs> Roger. I, I love some of the dad jokes. First free throw in and out. Jacob Davis misses the front end of a one and one and the dogs get the rebound. Baines hands it to Toe. Between the feet dribble, gets it into the forecourt. Now trying to get around his man. Pulls up, throws it all the way back to Hassan Say. Chris O'War, coach of the Bulldogs, up off the bench. He'd like to see his team drain some clock and they're doing it. Baines dribbling around, hands it to Toe. Toe goes all the way to the hoop. His scoop is blocked, but there is Baines for the 
to grab the loose ball and score. It makes it a 12-point game, 61-49. 3.47 to go in the clock. Tick, tick, ticking down. Here goes Olivace, puts it up, drew contact, missed it, got his rebound, tries to get it to Ibi Kudele from point-blank range. The ball knocked out of bounds by the Dogs. Hassan Say had great position. He got charged into, looked like it should have been an offensive foul, but there was no call. And there's another timeout on the floor. With a score, 61-49, Bulldogs. Next Level Urgent Care supports Fort Bend County sports and supports you whenever you're hurting. Next Level is here for the community. Open seven days a week, nine till nine, for you and your family at more than 30 Greater Houston locations, including Sugarland, Sienna, Greatwood, Longmeadow, and four in Katy. From Owl to Wow, Next Level Urgent Care has you covered. And if you're short on time, Next Level has an app to get you in line right away. Just text NLUCAPP to 313131 for Next Level Urgent Care. Archer Volkswagen Showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. We see all you do to get work done, whether it's keeping your office clean or redesigning your space for three or 300. Our business is to keep business going. Buy online and pick up in store or get free next business day shipping at Office Depot, Office Max and OfficeDepot.com. We thank the folks at Office Depot, Southwest Freeway at Williams Trace in Sugarland, taking care of business every day so we can bring you Fort Bend County sports every week. Randall got the ball coming out of that timeout, trailing by 12, 61-49, and they missed a shot, but the ball went out of bounds, last touched by the dog, so Randall still has it. Jackson Stubbs trying to get around Rebueno, moves into the free throw circle, ball was on the floor, he regained it. Now another fight for oh, the ball, and Ajibola has it in the whistle. What is the whistle <laughs> it for? It was a timeout, Randall timeout. called timeout. All right, they want to save the possessions. They are critical now. With the team down by 12 and 319 to go, we'll be back. First Tire and Automotive wishes you safe travels and a happy holiday season. So, with a hustle and bustle of shopping, cooking, and traveling this holiday season, it's important to make sure your vehicle is prepared as well. Check out these Santa savings. $20 off services over $100, $40 off services over $200, and $60 off services over $300. And tire specials. Yes, First Tire and Automotive has those too. Check out the website, firsttireandauto.com, for details and to book your appointment today. First Tire and Automotive with four convenient locations in Sugarland and Cinco Ranch. Firsttireandauto.com. Patrick, last night when you got home from our doubleheader of broadcasts in Baytown, did you watch any college football? Watched a little bit of football, yep. Did you see how Arkansas ended up winning their bowl game over Kansas? Kansas. But I did. It was a lot harder than it needed to be. Uh, I, saw, I saw the end of that game. That was quite a finish. You ever wonder why the, the horn has to be that loud? I do sometimes. <laughs> it sure was loud at Lee College yesterday. Yeah, it was. Ray Rodriguez receives the inbounds pass. Straight to oh. the hoop he goes, and his layup rolls off. No good. Rebueno the rebound for the Austin Bulldogs. They lead by 12. We near the three-minute mark. Ethan Toe into the forecourt, protecting the basketball. That's what's really important as he draws a double team. Throws it all the way across the court to Turner. Goes into the paint. Now backs out. Throws it back to Rebueno. Rebueno sends it to Turner from the corner. Long pass to Toe. Toe just killing time between the rings, still dribbling. Goes down the right side of the free throw lane, leaves it for Patel. His layup is no good. Rebound Randall, 2.41 to go, and here come the Lions. They need to hurry. Quickly down the floor goes Jacob Davis. Kicks it back out for a three from Olivace. It is no good. Rebound Patel for the Dogs. Patel gets it to Toe. Toe. Throws it into the forecourt, but a lazy pass that Olivace intercepts, and he knocks Toe down on his way to the hoop. 
Well, and Toe it's a got foul in the way. on Toe, who was shuffling his feet. Not every day he's shuffling, but he was right there. Yep. Just good hustle, and it turned into a foul. And unfortunately for Toe, that sends the uh, Randall player to the line. Olivance to the line for, I guess, in one and one, or was he shooting in that situation? Well, I would have said he was shooting. Uh, They're I gonna, think they got the two hold, held up, so he's going to shoot two. If not for the contact, there's no doubt that he would have had a shot attempt. Definitely. So, so I would say, yeah, that's appropriate to give him the two foul shots. Well, you are right because the referee was holding up the two, and now they're toweling up the sweat area where toe went down. The perspification, I guess. We can't see. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> now a timeout. We like you very much, though. All right, so uh, timeout taken, and uh, the, our, our new young friend can find a better spot from which to, <laughs> to watch the game. Let's just keep it here, Patrick. 2.19 to go. All right, we're keeping it here. I would like to tell everybody what we're doing on Tuesday, but I can't remember. So I'm going to – you talk while I oh, look boy, at that, my, <laughs> my uh, phone. I feel like I'm being set up here. One of the uh, things that I've noticed here, the Randall Lions are a tough team to play. You're going you're gonna to be in for a fight when you play them. No seniors on the team, and they got a bright future ahead. Have you found what you needed to find, Roger? I have found it. On Tuesday night, we're going to have Foster at Marshall. The Marshall Buffs with a very strong basketball team, and Foster is always worthy competition. And then on Friday the 6th, Bush against Travis from Wheeler Fieldhouse. We'll have both of those games on VipeFortBend.com. There you have it. First free throw, no good by Olivace, and that is costly. Yeah, when you're down by 12, 2.19 to play, you need every point possible. Second free throw is short, and the rebound to Turner of the Bulldogs. Bulldog Turner, how about that? He was a Pro Football Hall of Famer. Now a long pass to Ribueno. Throws it over to Hassanse. Patel, top of the key. They're just playing keep away now and doing a very good job. Ribueno trying to get away from a double team. Moves into the free throw circle, kills his dribble, gives it to Baines. Baines is just... Moving away from the defense. Turner drives the baseline, gets it poked away from behind. Here comes Randall on the way to the hoop. It's Ajibola puts it up and scores. He's looking for the foul on that too. I think he had a case. His team's still down 10, 61-51. Baines into the forecourt for the Dogs. Kills his dribble. Now a long pass. Hassan Say gathers it in, barely. Now he kicks it back out to Patel in the right corner. Now inside, Baines, and he traveled. 125 to go. This thing's not over. Randall will get the ball trailing by 10. I just don't understand that travel call. I just didn't see it. Did you see that travel call? You just uh, he stopped. It might have. It was he, kind of a. It kind of looked like traveling. It it looked odd, but I don't think it was. I didn't think it was traveling. But if I saw the replay, maybe I'd be corrected. And I'm not the expert. Ajibola throws it into the corner. Quick release. Three is no good by Stubbs. And the rebound comes down to the Dogs. It was run down by Jason Thomas. Randall thought they had a steal in the backcourt, but they are called for the foul. That's interesting. That's, you know, they're upset by the call, and it might have been a little iffy on the call, but that's only their third foul of the, of the half. So they've been pretty fortunate to not have some other fouls called earlier. Rebueno and Hassan say playing catch. Dogs get it into the offensive end, and now a foul called on Ajibola. And I think uh, well, his they... arm struck Hassan Say's arm, <laughs> but I don't know who initiated the contact. Well, now they're, now they're fouling just to get to the bonus, I think. Yeah, because that's what they need to do. Rebueno puts it up, and the leaner drops in. That'll do it, I, I think. I think it does, yeah. 12 points with less than a minute to go. There goes Ray Rodriguez. Puts it up over Hassan. Say no good. Rebound to Jason Thomas. Big, tall dude holding the ball over his head. And now Austin almost throws it away. 
Randall thought that the dogs were the last to touch it. And the two officials, there are three of them, but two of them are going to talk it over. And the ball belongs to the Bulldogs. No change right. in the call. That's interesting. Coach Eisenhower are not real happy with that. I don't think there's really any need to foul at this point with 36 seconds to play down by 12. Well, I don't think Ajibola meant to foul, but he meant to steal the ball, and I think he's just committed his fifth. Yeah, he's on the bench now. He's going down to shake hands with the opposing coach. Yes, nice coach gesture. Or. Wow, he looks, he looks great. I mean, he's dressed in all black, but he's put on the golden corduroy jacket. Yeah, he's, he's looking pretty... Pretty sleek here. Looks like he's ready to go out and have brandy and cigars. <laughs> okay, 33 seconds to go. Rebueno just playing keep away. Long cross court pass to Baines. There goes Patel. Dribbles. Oh, I'm sorry, Hassan Said dribbles a couple of times. Baines kills the dribble. Gets it to Hassan Say. 20 seconds to go. They lead by 12. Over in the corner, Patel just dribbling away from everyone. Rebueno fakes a pass. Now throws a pass in the corner to Thomas. And That'll that's going to do it. Five seconds. They're just going to dribble it out. Congratulations, dogs. You win the final scheduled basketball game of the year 2022 by a score of 63 to 51. How about we take a break, and uh, you'll have some numbers, and we might get an interview if Coach O'War remembers that, uh, you know, dogs win, send a player over here. We'll be back. Norman, before we start the surgery, I have some bad news. What is it, doctor? Well, I never graduated from med school. But the good news is, it's the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale. Now hurry, because new Xfinity customers can get 75 megabit internet for just $19.99 a month for 12 months with a one-year contract. And this will get your heart rate up. When you add Xfinity Mobile, you get the best price for two lines of Unlimited. I gotta get this deal. Plus, for a limited time, get $500 back with two new mobile lines. That's amazing, doc. I know. I don't want to miss this deal. Let's reschedule. Doc? Doc? Drop everything and get to the Xfinity Hello 2023 sale now through January 10th. Go to Xfinity.com slash Hello 2023. Call 1-800-XFINITY or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Internet offer requires paperless billing and auto pay with stored bank account. Equipment, taxes, and fees extra. After term, regular rates apply. Xfinity Internet required for Xfinity Mobile. Compares Xfinity Unlimited intro to lowest price 5G plans of top three carriers. Reduce speeds after 20 gigabytes of usage per line. Data thresholds may vary. Archer Volkswagen showroom is open, and our team's excited to help you. Visit our sales department Monday through Saturday from 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. Or bring your car in for service from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Friday, and Saturdays from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. We're closed on Sundays to rest and recharge with our families, so we can serve you well through the week. We hope to see you soon. Next Level Urgent Care supports Fort Bend County sports and supports you whenever you're hurting. Next Level is here for the community. Open seven days a week, nine till nine, for you and your family at more than 30 Greater Houston locations, including Sugarland, Sienna, Greatwood, Longmeadow, and four in Katy. From Owl to Wow, Next Level Urgent Care has you covered. And if you're short on time, Next Level has an app to get you in line right away. Just text NLUC APP to 313131 for Next Level Urgent Care. Fort Bend County. Wait a minute, I moved my mic out of position. Now I can start over. Fort Bend County. Basketball on VipeFortBend.com is brought to you by Archer Volkswagen, Next Level Urgent Care, the Needville Insurance Agency, First Tyrant Automotive, and also Xfinity. Xfinity Mobile is the best kept secret in wireless. Well, we were yelling players' names across the gym floor, Patrick. We were unable to wrangle an interview, but that's okay because I'll bet those young men would rather... Go do something else. You I'm know, not so sure about that. If you got an interview opportunity, if you were that age, wouldn't you be jumping at that opportunity? Well, it just depends on what the other opportunities are. <laughs> That's true. That's true. You know, but you, you know, I want to make it clear. You, you said we were shouting across the floor. It really was not we. It was well, I just Roger think of, Smith. I just think <laughs> of you know, guys say 
we when they're talking about the team. I hear you. Even if one guy okay. did something. Okay, well, you're saying I'm not a team player. Is that what you're saying? I, I'm not saying that. <laughs> here's some you need to make a New Year's resolution <laughs> to stop twisting my words here's like some, that. Here's some totals for the, uh, for the scoring. Austin wins the game 63-51. to 51. A hard-fought game. They were down at halftime by five. But they really did come out in the second half and did a good job. Basically, they started hitting some of those three-pointers. For your Bulldogs, who we know you would love to hear their totals, Thomas with two. Rebueno ended up with 11. I don't think he had any at halftime. He hit a couple threes and a two at the end. Turner with five. Uh, Toe ended up with nine. Patel, two. Baines, ten. Hassan, Hassan Say. Hassan Say. He had 17, the leading scorer for the game, and Rolls ended up with eight. Uh, for the Lions, the uh, high scorer was a Jabola. A Jabola. He had uh, Ebola. He had uh, 12. And then their big freshman center, you can pronounce that name again for us. Ibikunle. Ibi he ended up with nine. So those are the high scorers for the. Lions who fought hard, and they have you can see the bright future ahead of them as they have no seniors on this team. Uh, young, young school, young team, but a bright future ahead. Congratulations to the Bulldogs on a big win. And, Roger, Happy New Year to you, and thanks for all you do for me and for Vipe, Fort Bend, all the support you give to the high school athletics out here in Fort Bend. We're lucky to have you here, Roger. Way to go, and thank you again. Wow, I'm, uh, thank you very much. And I know that uh, I can't give adequate thanks, but you, you do need to go somewhere. So all the same, right back at you. Happy New Year. And it is such a pleasure to be bringing everybody these, these fantastic high school sports. It's just one of the best things that there is, is uh, what the excitement, the, the lessons, all the stuff that we get out of high school sports. And thank you, parents, because without you parents, we wouldn't have kids to play these games. So, for Patrick Kinnick, Merle Bertrand, Suna Venkat, Bob McKay, everyone on the VipeFortMen.com team, this is the last time we will talk to you in 2022, but we will be back with you on Tuesday for the basketball game between the boys from Foster and Marshall. It'll be on Buffalo Run, and we'll come your way at 645 Tuesday night. And also, Friday night, we'll have Bush and Travis from Wheeler Fieldhouse at 645. Good night. God bless. And we will talk to you in 2023. This has been a VipeFortBend.com presentation.